Hello, everybody. Once again, this is a very impromptu video. I don't even have any makeup on except for a little lip gloss that I just quickly put on before making this video. Um, wasn't planning on filming again for a couple of days because I've, I've already got some videos pre-scheduled, but um, I had a lot of questions coming in about the challenge and some of the questions were very similar. So I want to go ahead and address some of these questions just to everyone. Um, first of all, children. So we spoke about this with Shanti and Mornay and, um, but obviously if you didn't see that episode, I'll go ahead and reiterate with children with this challenge. Absolutely. Your children can do this challenge with you. However, in my opinion, I would not, um, make this challenge for them, what it is for you, especially if they're under the age of 10. Now, remember our chakras, our energy points develop at certain points in our lives. And so the seventh chakra, the last one to complete its uh, creation happens in, in our early 20s. And so through these developmental stages in a child's life, I would just let them kind of play with you in the challenge. Um, Shanti and Mornay uh, obviously work with children. And so if you want your child to specifically be involved in a program that's like this challenge, but geared towards children, I would definitely look into their Sun Kids program. And I will link Aquarius Rising Africa's channel in the description box below. So you can click over there to get more information on their Sun Kids program where they are specifically trained to work with children through this process of shadow work because with kids, it's not going to be, you're not going to go as deep with children as you are as an adult because children don't have the, they have the intuition, but they don't have the intellectual understanding that you do. And so some of the topics, especially later on in the challenge, we're going to be talking about betrayal. We're going to be talking about um, our own childhood wounds, all those kinds of things. That might be a little bit too heavy for a kid that's under the age of 10. So if you want to talk to them about that, Shanti and Morning again had a really good idea about drawing pictures, having them color a picture. And so you could even say like, is there a time when one of your friends at school hurts your feelings? Or, you know, I wouldn't, betrayal is a very deep trauma. And I'm actually, the day that we cover that later on in the challenge, I'm going to pose, be posting some interviews and some discussions with a clinical therapist that talk about betrayal trauma. And hopefully, fingers crossed, hopefully most children under the age of 10 haven't actually experienced that yet. So I would just be really mindful about that, of course, as a parent. You know, you, you, you have the ultimate authority over how much you let your child know or, or how much you allow them to participate in this challenge. I would not be doing cold therapy with your child. That's going to be one of the things you do is like the last five minutes of your shower, you're going to make it cold. I wouldn't do that with your kid because they're just too young to understand um, the nervous system and all that kind of stuff. And they're still growing. And as, as Shanti mentioned, their bones are still kind of mushy as they, they still grow and shift into who they are or who they're going to be as, um, as adults, uh, before puberty, they're in the COPPA stage of life anyway, the cocooning stage. So as far as the exercise, you know, if they want to do the videos with you that I put up great, but if they stop halfway and go play with their toys, then awesome. Just let them kind of have fun, let them play with it. Um, you know, be, be if your kid is, does like 10 minutes of a bar video with you and then decides to go run off and play, just tell them they did a good job, you know, don't you know, boost their confidence up so that when they become an adult and they are faced with these, this kind of work, it won't be something that they're unfamiliar with and they won't have a lot of hangups around it. Um, of course, with journaling, again, depending on what age they are, if you have a teenager that's doing it with you, um, if, if some hardcore triggers arise with your teenager once again remember their seventh chakra has not developed yet so that's the hard thing with teenagers teenagers have the intellectual capacity of an adult but they don't have the wisdom energy yet and so that's where it gets tricky with teenagers and i would definitely suggest if something comes up if your teenager is doing it and something comes up really dark or really heavy starts to come out of your teenager, um, I personally would suggest finding a trauma therapist in your area to then work with them 
or you can contact Shanti or any of these Reiki healers that you know through YouTube that can help you better handle that and navigate that. The thing about trauma is that sometimes it can kind of be like a landmine. And um, I said this in the opening of our challenge, this challenge is just meant to be kind of a, a breakthrough, kind of like an introduction for you. And so if something gets overwhelming, even for you, if something comes up, like you have a memory of something that happened to you as a kid, and it feels like all of a sudden it's super overwhelming, please seek out professional help. It's okay. I've gone through trauma therapy. My yoga showed me that I needed trauma therapy. I went through it years ago. It was the best thing I ever did. So sometimes these exercises, they're not going to like give you the answers. They're going to kind of show you where the work needs to be done. And so if something becomes really overwhelming for you or for your child, please seek out a professional either with Reiki um, or trauma therapy. I, I know people have mixed views about therapists, but I'm telling you there are some good ones out there, but it's totally up to you. That's your power to figure out what, what your next step is. If something like that does come out of you or out of your child. Uh, the next thing I wanted to again, uh, reiterate, a lot of people have written saying, I don't know if I get all the exercising in. It's okay. If you, if you have to like modify some of the days, this is just a template. It's not mandatory that you do everything exactly right. This is a call to challenge for that reason to kind of challenge you to see um, what you can learn about yourself. And for me, I have, I know what exercise modalities work for me. And so that's why for me personally, I'm yoga and bar. That's pretty much all I do is yoga and bar because I know that's what, that, that's work, what works best for my body. It's what works best for my joints and for my, my emotional state. Um, but for you, your best modality might be kickboxing. And you don't know that yet. And so that's why in this challenge, every day I have different exercises and different selections. So some days you're going to get to pick which one you do. And it's for you to figure out what works best for you. Um, just as there's not one diet that works with everyone, it's going to be the same with exercise. Not one exercise is going to have the same reaction to every single person. And with that being said, the exercise modality might change over time um, as well. Like, like to, uh, this month, you know, kickboxing might not be good for you this month, but you know, in a couple months, if you go back and try it again, maybe then your body will be ready for it. There's no, there's no idea. Just attempting to do this challenge is you doing the challenge, right? You're not being graded. You can't, the only way you can fail this challenge is if you just completely quit altogether, right? As long as, what if one day you only get the 64 ounces of water in? Okay, then you got the 64 ounces of water in. Perfect, awesome, you did that. So if a day goes by and you didn't hit everything on the list, okay, who cares? You did something and something is better than nothing. You know, people have to, I've heard running coaches say, you know, people complain like I'm the slowest runner in the group. Well, you're a hell of a lot faster than the person who's laying on the sofa right now. Right. So don't ever think that there has to be perfection in anything like this. That's, that's the sports world coming out. That's the ego coming out. I don't care if you only make it through 10 minutes of the exercise portion every day, as long as you're doing something to get to know yourself. And I am aware that there are people of all fitness levels doing this challenge. And so that's why on some days I'll have like either 45 minute kickboxing or 20 minute beginner yoga, and you get to pick which one works for you. With that being said, some people have asked me that they already have an exercise plan that they've been working with for a while awesome. Great. Stick to what you're doing. Just replace what, what I have on the challenge with your exercise modality, right? So then the journaling portion, you can just, you know, X out all the questions about that particular exercise. And you can ask the questions about like how, what emotions are coming up. You know, maybe for some of you, if you've like, let's use the example, let's say you've been runners for a really long time and you've just been doing the running just for your physical health, which is a great reason to do exercises for your physical house, but, but maybe you never put two and two together that your running is actually meditative or that the running is actually presenting you with emotions. 
So maybe that's what this challenge is going to be good for you, that, that you can replace all the other exercise programs, keep your exercise program, and then look at it differently. Look at it in a different perspective. When you're doing, say you are a runner, and so now you're starting to think about it differently because the challenge is giving you that opportunity. So when you're doing your three-mile run, maybe you can bring your focus into your body and be like, okay, how is the energy moving through my body? How are, is energy coming out of my hands when I run? When I do this with my arms, is this instinctual? What's happening with my heart chakra? Is there energy coming through my hands, through my shoes, through my feet? Yeah, so even if you are doing an exercise modality and you got to replace it with the ones that I have because that's what you've been doing, then you just journal differently about what you've been doing, okay? Does that make sense? I, everything always makes sense in my mind. I don't know if it makes sense in other people's minds. Um, same with, I had someone ask about water aerobics. Yes, of course. If you've been doing water aerobics because it's better for your joints, keep up with the water aerobics and then just start to journal about your experience with the water aerobics. How are your joints? Can you actually go into your body while you're in the exercise and feel how your joints are moving through the water? Ask your body while you're doing the water aerobics, what do you want me to know about this experience? What are you trying to tell me about this experience? Does that make sense? Um, I have a lot of men signed up for this, which I'm super excited about. I encourage you men to do the bar. Um, I know a lot of times men think, oh, the bar, that's for girls. Marnie Alton is a badass. And I am a part of Marnie Alton's online platform, I, which one of the prizes is going to be a month access to her online platform, which is her studio now where she puts up new exercises almost daily. Um, and there are a lot of men that are involved in this because it is such an ass kicker. There's a reason why the NFL does ballet, right? And um, I just put an uh, interview up on my community tab from Marnie Alton. And it's an incredible interview to listen to. She is by far one of my favorite teachers. I've done a lot of bar classes. When I first was introduced to bar, it was when I broke my sacrum a few years back. And I was having a really hard time just healing it with the yoga. And so one of my really good friends, who's kind of a movement expert, suggested I try bar classes uh, because it was going to focus more on my core to help support the healing of my sacrum. And I tried a bunch of bar classes in Atlanta, like live classes, and I just didn't, I didn't, <coughs> excuse me, I didn't find much benefit from them. They weren't, I wasn't. At that point, my and still as my level of fitness was so high that I wasn't feeling the extra added um, strengthening I needed to get through my injury. And then one day I was just looking on YouTube and I found Marnie Alton, the 45 minute bar Marnie Alton that I'm sharing on this challenge. I found that and I thought, I like this girl. She teaches bar a little bit different than other bar teachers. And so I started to kind of follow her and then I joined her platform. And so, um, and I started to really pay attention to the way she was teaching. And she really um, marries the Eastern philosophy of spirituality with this modern adaptation of bar. And when I hear, when I hear her say certain things like being the watcher, right? Not judging yourself, but watching yourself. That's all yoga principle that she's pulling into the bar. And I, for one, am, have always been a firm believer that the yoga principle or theory can be put into any type of modality of exercise. Yes, the yoga postures are designed to open up different pathways and channels of energy. However, the theory, it can be used anywhere. And so that's why I added a lot of different other exercises because I want you guys to understand that any type of exercise can be a modality for friction and change. Okay. Um, and I've had a lot of people uh, ask me about their age. Um, am I too old to do this? Absolutely not. Let me tell you something. I started going to India in my early thirties. I'm now in my late, I'm about to be 40 in a couple of months. When I go to India, there are students in that room who are like in their seventies and they're the toughest students in the freaking room. Okay. Your age ain't nothing but a number. And the way I see it is if you are in your 60s or 70s and you're kind of nervous because of your age, first of all, no one's watching you. So you're not in a room with a bunch of 20 year olds. Don't worry about it. It's not about you even comparing yourself to a 20 year, year old. Comparison is the thief of joy. I want you guys to remember that 
that's your mantra for your first week. I need to write that down to remind myself to put it up. Comparison is the thief of joy. So think about that. Every time you've compared yourself to someone else, it stole your joy. Don't let anybody steal your joy, especially you. All right. Do not compare yourself to a 20 year old. Don't compare yourself to someone who's thinner than you or stronger than you. Don't compare your chapter one to someone's chapter 10. Okay. The only reason why we're doing these exercises, again, is for you to discover yourself. It's not for you to be perfect at the exercise. It's not for you to become an, a fitness instructor. Yeah, if that's something you want to do, work towards it. None of that. You are going to be by yourself. No one's going to be watching. You can mess up as much as you want. You can fall down as many times as you want. You can pause it as many times as you want. It's the free. You have that freedom in your own home to do that. Okay. And if you are older, I want you to think about this though. You have years of experience in your body. You have more experience in life than someone 40 years younger than you. Think about how incredible that is in your situation. Yes, you're sitting there thinking, oh, I'm older. I'm not going to be able. No, your body has a, is a treasure chest of experiences and wisdom that you can start to unlock by doing these exercises, as long as you're getting a little sweaty and you're feeling that friction, perfect. I tell my students in yoga all the time, messy yoga, ugly yoga, that's the best yoga. Pretty yoga, that's boring. It's uninspiring. When I see demos, I'm like, okay, wow, you know. But when I see someone that's really struggling, but they're focused and they're sweating, man, that is so interesting. That's the best kind. So I want you to think about that. When you're doing these exercises, the place where you feel like you're not strong enough or you're having a hard time keeping up, that's where it's interesting. The places in these exercises where you feel great and like you're in Cirque du Soleil and you're a performer and you know the moves, that's boring. That's boring. But I want to hear where you're struggling because that's where it's juicy. That's where it's interesting. That's where you have something to work with. You know, I've said before in my own body, so in my own body that I'm in, I'm really good at forward folding. I'm really good with leg behind the head. I've just always been good at that. My body, for some reason, was always just able to do that. But backbending, that's where I struggle. So that's where it's interesting because that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where there's friction. And in that spark of friction, there's information. There's a treasure chest of information. Where it's easy and there's not as much friction... What are you going to learn? But where there's tension and resistance, that's where we get to dive deep and learn things about ourselves. And the real beautiful thing about this is in your own body, you're the only one who can learn that. You're the only one. I'm not in your body. Your husband, your wife, your kids, they're not in your body. You are. You are. That's your power. So you can either choose to waddle in self-pity because something's hard and you don't think you can do it, or you can choose to say, you know what, I really suck at this exercise, but it's going to be fun. And because I suck at it, because it's hard for me, this is where it's really entertaining and this is where it's really interesting and this is where my potential lies. Yeah. It's just like um, when we lift weights, right? When you lift a weight, when you don't lift weights, there's nothing there. But when you grab that weight, there's more resistance that you're working against. That's where your trouble spot is. That's where the weakness is. That's where you have to focus too. That's where the meditation lies. So again, where the, where the workout is easy for you, you're not going to be meditating. You're going to be thinking about the laundry. You're going to be thinking about 
that cute boy at your job. You're going to be thinking about how your husband pissed you off last night because he didn't close the toilet seat. I don't know, <laughs> you know, whatever. But when you're at that place, that's like, oh shit, this is hard. Your mind is totally focused on that moment. And when you have that one pointed focus, because that's what meditation is, is a one pointed focus, then you're in meditation because God lives in the now. God didn't send us here to earth to just kind of twiddle our thumbs and let life pass us by. He gave us these bodies because these bodies hold treasures and information for us. And so don't run away from that. The only way it's like when you go on a treasure hunting, if you ever like tried to dig up treasure, you got to actually put the shovel in the dirt to dig up the dirt, right? Or else you're not going to find the treasure. Same with your body. If you don't do anything and you don't create friction, you're never going to know what you're, all, what you're made of. You're never going to find that friction. And even with the muscles alone, like even health wise, when you sweat, when the muscles are burning, that you're feeding your muscles at that point. That's your muscles being fed. I, I'm going to encourage you guys. I know that some of you guys are going to get really sore during this. I've been sore for 16 years. I'm sore today. I was sore yesterday. I was sore the day before. And when you first start working with soreness, it's going to feel very emotional. But don't stop. Don't not exercise because you're sore. Days when I'm super sore is usually when I have the best exercise because you're sore because your muscles are rebuilding themselves, right? So that's what's happening in exercises. You're ripping your muscles apart and then they're having to rebuild themselves. And when they rebuild themselves, they build stronger. So if you're sore from the day before and you get back on that yoga mat or back on that kickboxing and you go at it again, you're still flushing, you're continue to flush out that. Yeah. So I hope that makes sense. Don't be afraid of soreness. Don't be afraid of discomfort, any of that. Don't be afraid of your age. Don't be afraid of your limitations because your limitations aren't limitations. Marnie Alton says this all the time. Obstacles aren't obstacles. They're just puzzles. They're just puzzles being presented to you. They aren't obstacles. They're puzzles. Yeah. Um, let me see what else. I'm trying to think if there were any other questions somebody had. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm probably missing something. Um, oil bathing. I know I've gotten some questions about that. It's not an actual bath. It's a shower. But when you get to the Friday night oil, oil bathing, I have it written out. But I also have a link to a video where I go into detail about oil bathing. That's really good for soreness and for removing the inflammation and heat. Um, yeah. And if you guys have any more questions that are left out, just ask me down in the comment section below. Um, we are literally almost at 300 people. Right now, doing this challenge, somebody put, let's get to 500. If you guys can just spread this word, spread the word, and we get us to 500, that would be unbelievable. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I know whoever's supposed to do it will do it because that's how divinity works. And by just you doing this and taking on your own demons, you're gonna, your vibration is going to change so much. And I want to explain that again. We got to descend before we can ascend. So it might not feel like it. Some of these days when your emotions are raw, it might not feel like you're actually changing your vibration, but you are. We call it the dark night of the soul or the ego death. Those days where you're really feeling in the pits of darkness and you're emotional and the world feels heavy. That's when things are shifting. Don't give up. Okay. All right, you guys. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see how this goes. Um, anyway, I love you all and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.